What's up guys? I am back and I have a new project. This is a 1967 Honda CA160, sometimes called the Baby Dream. Um, yeah, I love this bike. I love the shape of it. It is really cool. Just a little 160cc guy, but um, here's the thing. The engine was seized that I just freed it up, but it has super low compression. And that's okay because I have a plan for this bike. I'm going to convert it to electric, to battery powered. Because that is the future, baby. That's going to be so cool and rad when uh, the electric revolution passes that tipping point. And this is going to be my foot into the door into that EV world. And one day, maybe I want to convert my uh, Volkswagen with the Miata inside into electric, too. Um, and really, this bike is also going to be for my wife to ride. She refuses to learn how to, how to use a manual transmission. She hates the gas fumes and the, the exhaust fumes. And every time she rides on the back of my CL200, she complains. When we get off the bike that she smells and her hair smells all day and something crazy. But um, I want her to be able to ride this with, you know, she can ride this while I ride mine. We can ride around together and I think that would be badass and I think that chicks who ride bikes are fucking hot as shit. So, this can be for her. And um, she's also not a very tall lady and this isn't a very big bike so it'll be perfect I think. Um, Alright, now, I think... I'm going to have this broken down in the stages like I had my last project broken down in the stages. And uh, so the first stage will be to kind of get this into a really solid uh, roller. Then I'll build up the motor and I can bench test that. And um, so I'll have the batteries, the, the hub motor, or maybe the mid-mount electric motor. And uh, the motor controller and the DC-DC converter and all the littler components then. Get that on the bike. That can be like stage two, I guess. And just get it moving around. And then stage three can be um, take it all apart and restore everything and get this painted and polished. So uh, that's the plan with this uh, project. And I also have a name for this project. So I mentioned earlier that sometimes this is called the baby dream because the Honda dream was a, a little bigger. And this is... A, almost identical in looks, just smaller. And so I'm going to call this the Dreamy. Honda Dream Dash E. Dreamy. And that's that's my name for this. So uh, let's do this, guys. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the engine and everything, but before I, wanted, before I do that, I want to power wash it. So I'm going to go do that right now. Okay, let's let the disassembly begin. However, I'm going to do something extra special this time. And we're going to try out some uh, stop animation uh, photography. So enjoy.
Okay guys, I got the uh, engine all out. That was pretty easy to get out. Very nice and easy. It's sitting over there. Uh, and um, Also, I hope you liked that time... I almost said time lapse. I hope you liked that stop animation. Because there's going to be more of that in the future, for sure. I loved making that. And if you liked it too, then you should subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. It's free. And it helps me out. Um, so... Now that the engine's out, and there's this big gaping hole here, I kind of want to put the tank on it in the seat and just see how it looks. The seat's falling apart. Yeah, so it goes something like that. So let's get a look at that. All right, I'm definitely gonna keep this gas tank because that's a, you know, it, it looks hella cool, of course. Um, the seat, I'm not as sure about. I could keep the OEM seat, or I might um, use the seat pan, which is crusty as hell right now, but um, not too rusty, really. Just the foam is falling apart. And do like I did with this bike here, which I or used the original seat pan, but then I um, shaped the foam to be a little lower profile than had a, an upholstery shop wrap it, custom job. Or, you know, I really like just the profile of this. I love this. And you could put like a, a solo seat here. Or something. So I'll have to decide that in the future. Um, and I'm actually thinking of all of this. And I put it into Photoshop. And I was playing around with the different uh, layers in Photoshop. And, and I was trying to build a mock-up. And I was especially thinking of what I want to do for the battery box. So um, I have some ideas. And go ahead, guys, and let me know in the comments what you think. But I did come up with a final rendering of what I think it could look like with a, a neat battery box. Yeah, it looks a little weird without the seat, but with the tank and no motor. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But um, right now i got to do lots of calculations to figure out what battery size and motor size I need. And we're going to switch to the computer, and we'll do those calculations now. The three main decisions to make when designing your electric vehicle is the battery, the motor, and the motor controller. The charger, the battery management system, and the other smaller components can be based off these three decisions. Before I begin, I want to have a st starting point. And by that I mean I want to look at what other builders with similar sized bikes are using for their builds and how it is working out for them. I found several on YouTube and EndlessFear.com. One of them is a YouTuber named Micah Toll which I actually uh, recently purchased one of his books. And he's building a Honda Sports Cub, and he's using a 3 kilowatt hub motor made by QS Motors with a 72-volt lithium-ion battery pack with a 42-amp-hour capacity. Another builder on this Endless Sphere forum is also building a Honda Baby Dream, and his is a CA95 and a few years older than mine. He's using a 4 kilowatt hub motor also made by QS Motors, He's using 10 used Nissan Leaf battery cells wired together to make 72 volts and around 40 amp hours, I think. A third builder I've been following is Big Guy Little Bikes here on YouTube. He's building a Honda Cub. He selected the th same 3 kilowatt hub motor made by QS Motors as the first builder. And his battery pack, I couldn't this figure out because it appears he has abandoned the project. However, we will talk a little more about him and his build in just a minute. So you can see a bit of a pattern here. Three to four kilowatt QS hub motors, 72 volt battery with around 40 amp hours. Now I can use this voltage and motor size as a starting point for my calculations. First I decide what max speed I want and then calculate the motor RPM to achieve that speed at that wheel diameter. So let's say I want to go a max speed of 50 miles per hour. With a 23 inch diameter wheel, which is what my 17 inch rim plus three inch tire adds up to, 
There's an algorithm that converts the diameter of the circumference in inches to how many fractions of a mile that is, then how many revolutions of that wheel would be needed to add up to one mile, and then how many revolutions per minute would be needed to reach my speed, 50 miles in, in one hour, and that is 730 RPMs. So I'll need a motor that can do 730 RPMs when loaded. Let's look at the uh, 3 kilowatt QS motor I was just talking about and look at those specs. The Chinese company, QS Motors, is much better than other sellers on eBay and Alibaba with showing their specs, but it's still confusing. We can see that we can reach 830 RPM at 72 volts. It also says that's good for 85 kilometers per hour, which is 52.8 miles per hour for a wheel size of 24 inches. But if you do the math for that, it just doesn't add up. So is that RPM figure the no load speed or is the max RPM at load or are they giving us something somewhere in between? And that is for the high speed winding, but it doesn't say what the torque is reduced to. It doesn't show torque curves or even a single torque figure for each of those configurations which is why it would be really nice to see the top speed and acceleration the other builders are seeing with that motor. However, neither of them has finished their build yet. And that brings me back to the other YouTuber, Big Guy Little Bikes. He provides a really nifty spreadsheet that does a lot more calculating for things like acceleration force, amps needed, max amps per cell, and most importantly, RPM per volt needed. I will say that some of his Formulas are straight up laws of physics, such as force equals mass times acceleration, but many of the other formulas he's using are assumptions, rules of thumb, and estimates. But it still is helpful, and if you want an even more in-depth discussion about how this all works, then visit his video, and I'll link to that on the screen now. So I put all of my numbers into his spreadsheet, and this is what I got. It says I need a motor that can do 13.9 RPM per volt. The 3 kilowatt QS motor can only do 11.2 RPM per volt in the high speed low torque winding. So according to the spreadsheet, the motor will not be fast enough to reach 50 miles per hour, if all that math is correct. And I didn't even touch on batteries, which is arguably the most important decision of them all. I'll get fully into batteries in the next episode, but let's just say I'm looking at these batteries. I would need 13 of them wired in series to get 72 nominal volts and let's just assume that the Chinese seller is inflating their discharge rates by 150%. When I do the math, they can continuously provide 3.6 kilowatts at the nominal voltage, and on a full charge, they could give a burst of 6.9 kilowatts. If that is true, then the 3 kilowatt hub motor would be a huge bottleneck in this system. So let's look at the 4 kilowatt QS hub motor. It is only available as an alloy wheel, and for appearances, I want a spoked wheel. So I'm not even going to consider this. That means I need to start looking at the mid-drive motors, and I'm afraid we just don't have time for that in this episode. Again, it would be really nice to see what the other builders who are using the uh, QS hub motors are achieving with uh, max speeds. But neither of them has a finished bike, so I'll just have to keep looking for real-world results or rely solely on my math. Okay, one last thing before I go. I want to talk about this crusty garage I'm in. You probably saw in the background of all these videos like this huge crack going over here, uh, paint chips and a hole in the wall right there and broken windows. And I'm going to be rebuilding this garage in the next couple of months. And so I'm going to have that on this channel, and it's going to be... Yeah, I know, I just started two projects simultaneously. But um, I imagine on the weekends, when the weather is nice, at least this winter, I'll be working on the garage and building a whole new add-on, a room right here, and repairing the foundation and everything. And um, during the week, maybe I'll have some time to work on this, but uh, honestly, with an EV, you're doing a lot of math. <laughs> As much as you are wrenching. So I'm going to be doing lots of calculations and then ordering the parts and waiting for the parts to come in from China. So don't expect the fast and furious pace on this project. 
not like with my Volkswagen project. But um, so just keep a keep your eyes peeled for new videos and subscribe and hit the notifications button too if you want to get notified. So on that bombshell, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time. Okay, I'm trying to get this off and I don't know how to get it off. Um, there was so many bolts and screws missing on this. Do you see that uh, hornet's nest right there? These bugs keep on falling out and there's a bunch of them and they're really kind of gross.